We're excited to be here for the missions conference, and I pray you are too. Amen. I'm excited about tonight, tomorrow night. The Lord's already um, given me a message dealing with uh, your participation in missions. And we're just kind of going to break it down and look at different ways each one of us can uh, participate in the area of worldwide missions. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is a missions conference. And so preachers said, I want you to preach on missions. Amen. And so it's very clear. It's very clear. So that's what we're going to study about tomorrow night is on uh, uh, your participation in missions. Just kind of break it down real real simple and see how the Lord uh, biblically would like for each and every one of us, even the young people, uh, all the way to whoever you are. Amen. The Lord will be able to use you. And then Friday night, uh, the Lord's been giving me a message about, I don't know if you've ever heard the term, uh, like the, to the, now I lost it. That's why I have notes. Amen. It's in my other notebook. Uh, The unreached people groups. Amen. And so anyways, we're going to talk about an unreached people group in the Bible. Amen. And so I'm excited about that one. And so I just uh, hope you are too, so you can start looking forward, praying about that, and uh, looking forward to the next uh, services tomorrow night and Friday night. Amen. So we're excited about that. I've got some good reports from our church back in Brazil, and uh, they're having a missionary this coming Sunday too, amen, so they're excited about that, and uh, on the church group, on the internet, I've seen them getting ready for it and making preparations, and who's going to bring what, and who's going to do what, and and uh, this time they're having soup for the missionary, and the, you know, six ladies are planning on bringing the soup last time, right before we left, and Nessa was in the States, and so uh, uh, we decided to have soup then, and uh, I was kind of heading it up, and you can already tell it's going to go bad, amen, yeah. and so... Uh, and so we were kind of heading it up, and you bring this, you bring that. Another lady in the church was helping organize the things, and and uh, she said, uh, so she she got drove up to the church in front of the lot there and the property, it was coming through the gate, and she was in their car, and and they had this big old hot. Uh, pot of soup and I said you need me to bring that in for you she said sure you know and it was hot and scalding and you know it was boiling it was really hot and so I grabbed it and brought it to the church and Samantha you want to help me sure and so when we was transferring the the pot of soup there we lost it amen and all this soup for supper that night just went all over us and all I could think was our supper, you know, everyone's supper, it's ruined, the banquet's ruined, you know, so I stuck my hand back in there to grab it. Long story short, her and I both ended up at the emergency room, amen, and uh, so uh, praise the Lord, we, we were better. I, I had a fishing trip planned four days later, and the Lord miraculously healed me, amen, but, uh, but uh, so, amen. He's good. Amen. But I missed the preaching and I missed the slide presentation and all that. But uh, they said it was good. And um, so I see they're doing it again. Amen. When the pastor isn't there to mess things up, you know. Uh, and so, so yeah, we'll, we're praying that they'll have a good one and, and we won't be, I won't be there to mess it all up. Amen. But uh, it was good to see that they're, as we're here learning about missions, continuing missions, isn't it wonderful to see other new works and yes. the missions work, getting involved in missions Amen. and sending missionaries out? Amen. Well, praise the Lord for that. And Amen. that's what it's all about. If you would, um, this evening, I want to look over in two, two scriptures to start out with. Proverbs 23, verse 23 will be our first scripture we will look at. Proverbs 23, 23. Then mark your place there and also look over in John seventeen seventeen. We will read both passages of scriptures, pray, and then go right into the sermon this evening. Proverbs 23, 23, buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Then let's look over, if you would, in John chapter 17 
verse 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Lord, we love you. We thank you so much that we're able to start this missions conference at the Twin Ports Baptist Church in, in uh, 2022. Lord, we pray that you would have your will and way this, e- this evening, Father, Lord. Lord, I, I really need your help this evening. And Father, I pray you just use me as thy vessel. And Lord, I am undeserving. But Father, I pray, Lord, that you just speak through thy word this evening to the people of the Twin Ports Baptist Church, the membership, Lord, that we might be able to see the need this evening, starting off the missions conference, see the need of each individual's participation in worldwide missions. And Lord, speak to us this evening, we pray in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. By the truth, and so it not is what we read in the Proverbs uh, 23, 23. It is a a wise statement. It is a Proverbs that we get and glean from the book of Proverbs. By the truth and sell it not. And I would like to apply that tonight to our responsibility as individual believers, but not only in only individual believers, but as members of a local New Testament gospel preaching, not just local gospel preaching, but worldwide gospel preaching church. Amen. Sure. So we're going to apply that, uh, that Proverbs by the truth and sell it not to, to the message this evening. And we see here in verse 17 of John 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. So looking at the thinking about buying the truth today in our, uh, our, way of saying things, we might say being sold out for the Lord, amen, or being sold out, all in, giving all you have to something, buy the truth and sell it not. Aren't you glad for those who have bought the truth before us, amen? Look at God's plan. If you look in uh, chapter 17 of John, you will see God's mission. You will see God's mission to the people. So let's look at, uh, uh, at verse seven. Uh, I'm sorry, chapter seventeen, verse one. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven, and said, "Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give." eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is eternal life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou has, which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was made. We see here God's mission. Before Jesus was to uh, finish the redeeming work of the gospel of Jesus Christ on the cross... We see he is standing before the people. He, in chapter 18, he's going to stand uh, before Pilate, and he's going, to, he's going to take his place on the cross, and he's going to save us from our sins. This was part of God's mission. Amen? So we see here, according from the words of Jesus Christ, God's mission, the mission of his Father. And he says in verse, uh, verse 1, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. There is a price that's going to be paid. In order for God, in order for the Father to be glorified, I am thankful for the price that Jesus paid that he purchased, that he bought for our redemption. Amen? Right. For my redemption. There was a price to be paid. He, th- there was a, 
there was a purchase price. There was something that was bought with the life of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Right. Why? So that the Father could be glorified. Right. What a perfect picture of missions. Amen. What a perfect picture of, uh, uh, of the gospel. Buy the truth and sell it not. When you buy something, it costs. Amen. It's not for free. It's, it, it costs. Uh, when we took our survey tri- trip, I was telling some of the men of the church the other day, when we took our survey trip, there was a missionary who said, told me, he said, missions cost. Missions is expensive. And he said in 10 years, he told me how much money has went through his hand in 10 years for, for you know, the ministry they had there. And I looked at that and I thought, that much meant went into this ministry? <laughs> That's it? You know, uh, I mean, that much money only bought this a little bit but God's plan was Jesus in his perfect blood in his blood that he shed for us it was a high price it was a high cost why glorify thy son that thy son may also glorify thee. If you do a word study on the word glory, glorify it, it means power. The power of God is revealed through the power of Christ. Amen? Through the power of the blood. Christ honors, Christ's power glorifies or honors the Father. And when you participate in missions, when I participate in missions, when we as a local body come together and participate in missions, and a sacrifice is made, and from that power, who is glorified? God is glorified. Amen. Amen. And as, the, as the Christ suffered and purchased our redemption, when we make a sacrifice, God is glorified. That is the plan of missions. So if you, you, see, you see the word glory, glory or glorified used a lot here in chapter 17. Verse, uh, verse 1, glorify thy son, that the son may also glorify thee. Uh, look at verse 2, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. So Jesus was able to give. Why? Because something was purchased. Buy the truth and sell it not. I want the truth. I want to be able to give the truth. And so we have God's mission here. In God's mission, we see the example. The truth was bought so it could be freely given to us. Amen? So now we are part of the Twin Ports Baptist Church. We are part of an organization, the vehicle that God has chosen, the local New Testament church, to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. But we were able to do that. Why? Because the truth was bought. Someone had to pay the price. It was glorified by the Son. And when there's a sacrifice made on the local New Testament church's end, we glorify the Son and we glorify God through that sacrifice. How? That we may in turn give it. That we might give it freely to those that don't have it. That's what he says in verse 3. And as this, and this is the life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, in Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Are we seeing God's mission here? God, the, name of Christ, the name of God is glorified. Why? Because others have seen the power of Jesus because God sent the Son. So we're seeing the example here. We're seeing the missions, the structure, the framework of missions in the relationship of Jesus and his Father. And as as God sent the Son so that the Son could make a sacrifice and freely give the gospel and freely give life, to us, we we will see here in the scriptures here in a little bit that that will that is exactly what Christ has called us to do because He set up the example, He set up the framework. Right. In verse four, I have glorified Thee on the earth; I have finished the work which Thou gavest me to do. He, praise the Lord, He finished. Amen. He right. didn't. Just, but what are we? 
this missions conference is important. Uh, missions conference, I've heard it, I don't want to say, say it wrong, but uh, I, I've heard it said something like this before, that uh, the missions conference is the business meeting of the local New Testament church that will decide the eternity the eternal destination of souls. Christ finished his work. I want this business meeting. I want this missions conference. I want the Lord to burden and to to direct our paths, and I want him to show us what we need to do this year for missions. But we have a work to finish, amen? What about next week when the missionaries are gone? What about a month from now? What about six months ago now when the banners are down and the flags are down and we're not thinking about missions, but we're thinking about the ice and the snowmobiles and how's the pizza going to get their house, yeah, amen? Yeah. We, have, we have a mission to finish, amen? Christ finished his work. He finished the goal, and he glorified God by doing that. Verse 4, I have glorified thee on the earth... He is no longer here, so church, we have, some, we have a work to do. Now, we have to glorify the Lord. We have to glorify God through the mission's work. So we see his mission, but we also see, his, we see God's mission, but we see the mission of the local New Testament church. We see his chosen's mission. And then verse 5, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto men. See, church, that, that is our responsibility. What does he say? I have manifested. I have shown forth. I have made known thy name unto the men which thou givest me out of the world. Thine, thine they were, and thou givest them me. They have kept my word. What is our responsibility? To give out the word. Amen? So others can keep it. We go to Brazil and we're in our city there and people will say, why are you here? As an American, why are you here in Brazil? Because all the Brazilians are are leaving Brazil to go to America. Why would you leave America? Why would you leave the United States to come to the Brazil? And I get, to, I get the opportunity to look at him and say, because of you. Amen? Sure. I have something to show. I have something to give. I have something to make known Amen. to them. I have the word. Amen? I have the word of God. I have the greatest message of all to show them that they may keep the word of Christ. But they have to know. We have to follow Christ. Christ is playing. We have to follow his mission. And so, verse 7, Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given are of thee. This is not my plan. This is not uh, my redemptive work. But it is Christ. It is God's redemptive work. Amen? Amen? And that's what Jesus is making known here to his Father. But look down in verse 10. He says, And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified... And now we see the transition here of the mission. I am, Christ says, I am glorified in who? Those who have received the word of God. Amen. So we saw from verse 1 through verse 8, we saw his, God's mission. But now we see our mission. And the transition is here. He's saying, I am glorified in them. And that is our mission. Uh, look down in verse, verse 16. No, I'm sorry, verse 18. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. So now we see our responsibility. We see our part of the plan, the redemptive plan of missions of the gospel as God has laid it out. If ten men are carrying a log and nine of them are on the little end of the log and one at the heavy end and you want to help 
which end will you carry? Church, we have, there is a great work to be done. There is a heavy load to carry. What is your part in missions? Pray about how God would use you during this week. Our church does a lot for missions. Praise the Lord. Amen. Our church does quite a bit for missions. But what part of the log do you carry? (laughs) What part of the load do you carry? I've helped carry furniture before. Amen. And I've started carrying it, you know, lift it up right away and had, you know, a whole bunch of guys there, six guys carrying it. And you're going up those stairs. And I know none of you men are like me. Amen. But halfway up, you're like, man, there's a lot of guys carrying this. I wonder if I wasn't carrying any of it at all, what would happen? You still have your hand there, but you're not helping anymore. You know, just see how are they doing it. They just keep on going. They have no idea you let go. Amen. And then, uh, you know, I repent and start helping again. Amen. It was just a test. Only a test. Amen. Amen. How much of the load are you carrying? I'm part of the Twin Ports Baptist Church. We do a lot for missions. This is what we're doing. How much of the load are you carrying? What end of the log are you carrying? If you take, someone said, if you take missions out of the Bible, you won't have anything left but the covers. Amen. Mm -hmm. Buy the truth and sell it not. Verse 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. I am going to Brazil. We're in Brazil. We're, We're in the Ukraine. We're in China, wherever it might be. Why? Because of the truth. Amen? Sanctify them through the truth. Thy word is truth. If we take missions out of the truth, we just have an empty book. We just have the covers. What's your participation in missions? So the church is involved in missions. It has a great responsibility. Love, someone said love is the root of missions. Sacrifice is the fruit of missions. So I want to talk just a little bit about the by, the the sacrifice part of missions. By the truth and so and not. By the truth. Love is the root of missions. Sacrifice is is the fruit of missions. I give to missions. That's the fruit. But why do I give to missions? Because of the love of the book. Amen? Amen. Because of the love of the word. I give. I participate. Aren't you, aren't you glad for that day that someone opened up the word of God and showed you how you could get saved? You remember that day that you came and you got saved? I remember two days before I turned nine years old. This lady uh, three times told me how I could get saved. And that night at our kitchen table, I got saved. Before that, I was in an office with two different pastors that went through the plan of salvation with me. They knew the word. They knew where to open. They knew what verses to give me. They knew how to pray for me. Why? Because they had studied. They had sacrificed. They had bought their own Bible. They had spent the time. We can say they bought the truth. They put effort in. It was able to purchase the truth. But you know what? They didn't charge anything for me to sit down with them so they could tell me about the gospel of Jesus Christ as an eight-year-old boy. They didn't charge me a dime. Amen? Why? But they had sacrificed for that knowledge. They had sacrificed for that Bible that they had held in their hands. What are we doing to get the gospel out. Right. We have it. Maybe you don't have it. <laughs> Maybe it's not up here. Maybe that's why we're not able to witness. Sure. Do, buy the truth. Yeah. Sacrifice. Study the word. Be approved unto God. Yeah. Don't be ashamed because you have bought the truth. You have studied it, and you have, uh, you have indulged in it, and you have gone in and gleaned from the word. 
This is a glorious mission. If you look, at, like I said many times in uh, this passage of Scripture in verse 10, and verse 4, and verse 1, he uses the word glorify. Christ glorified God by obeying God's mission. And when, in, in verse 18, and when as we obey him, and as he sends and we obey, we glorify Christ. Is this a glorious church? Are you part of a glorious church? A, a glorious church participates in missions. Amen. A, a glorious church sacrifices in missions. I'm not telling you what you should do for missions. That's between you and the Lord, amen? As I tell our people in Brazil, I'm not your Holy Spirit, amen? I'm not the church police. But between you and your Lord, between you and the Holy Spirit, what are you going to do about missions? How are you going to buy the truth so that you can freely give it? Uh, Chapter 17, verse 8. For which... For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out of thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. We glorify God by participating in missions. So how do we do that? By buying it, by putting in effort, by sacrifice. I, for I have given unto them. How was Christ able to give us salvation full and free? Because he purchased it, he bought it with his life. What are you going to do? How are you going to sacrifice so that others may hear? Oh, thy word is truth. What are we going to do about the, the Bible. What are we going to do to proclaim the word of God where those do not know a clear plan of salvation? How does God want us to involve ourselves in there? What is your, your involvement is needed. How are you going to participate? And then the other part of the Proverbs is sell it not. Sell not. Buy the truth and sell not. Look at John seventeen seven. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. Amen. God has given me the gospel. I have it full and free, but it's not mine. (laughs) I have to give it. I'm not going to sell it. It's not mine. I'm not just going to, now that I have Christ, I'm not going to be silent about it. It's not just for me. It's a whosoever will gospel, amen? amen. So it's not just for, uh, uh, now don't get it, um, I'm not going to go there, amen? It's a whosoever will gospel, I'll just right. say it that way, amen? It's not just for a few chosen or a few elect, I am chosen because I have volunteered. Christ says, whosoever will, I say, Lord, here I am. And I step forward, I volunteer myself, he says, hey, you're the chosen, amen? So now, since you're the chosen, go ye therefore. Participate in missions. I'm not going to sell it because it's a whosoever will gospel. It's not just for a few. I'm not just going to wait for them to get saved. No, I have to sell it not. I'm not just going to hog it. I'm not just going to hold on to it. But I'm going to proclaim it and give it liberally as I have received. Matthew 10.8. Matthew chapter 10. Verse 8. Heal the sick, clean, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. Sell not. Amen. We are able to go to Brazil and it doesn't cost our membership nothing to have a pastor and his family there. 
because we're freely giving. Others have made sacrifices so that the people of the Bible Baptist Church in Jeepon on Brazil can freely have a pastor and freely grow in the word and freely receive. And in turn, they have received because of your sacrifice and now they are sacrificing and having in missionaries and growing in love and growing in the word of God and are giving and are proclaiming the gospel to other national Brazilians to take to the other most part of the world so that the mission can continue. Amen. Because Christ has given us this mission and we have received freely. And so we're just going to keep on freely giving it out. Because that is what Christ has called us to do. And so this week, during this missions conference, the first night, I just want to encourage you to do, there is a load to carry. There is a sacrifice to be made. There is, the, the word must be purchased. There is a price to be paid to print out Bibles. There is a price to be paid to send. There is a price to be, to be a sacrifice to be made for others to be able to proclaim freely the gospel of Christ. Sure. What part will you have? Will you be involved in that mission? How will you participate? How will you carry the load? What, how much does the Lord want you to be involved? Sell it not. Carl Henry said, the gospel is only good news if it gets there in time. There are things, I'll be honest with you, church, there are things we want to do. We're already there. We're already living in Brazil. But there's just some ministries, there's just some areas of ministry that I can't participate in, like anyone, and we understand that, like any church. But uh, that, well, there's some things we want to do, but we just can't because we're limited financially. We want to have all irons in the fire. But we can't because we're limited. But praise the Lord, once in a while when we have a desire and we have a burden and we have a goal, sometimes we can start those ministries. Amen? Why? Because someone back home makes a sacrifice. Because another church comes on board. Because another person starts to give. And we're able to freely proclaim the gospel and give it out more and more because someone else back home has is freely giving. And that's what our goal is, to give them the good news of salvation before it's too late. Because it's only good news if it gets to them in time. Hudson Taylor said God's work done God's way will never lack God's supply. God wants, it's God's mission that he gave to Christ. Christ gave it to his church. And each one of us taking on the burden, taking on the sacrifice, doing it God's way, it will never lack supply. By the truth, sell it not. Thy word is truth. I will end this evening a little different way. There is a ministry worldwide missions ministry called Beams Bibles. And maybe some of you are familiar with that. Probably most of the church is familiar with it. It is a ministry that uh, supplies uh, free Bibles. They Individuals of local New Testament church, Baptist churches uh, and local churches participates in missions giving and buys, purchases Bibles, buys the paper, prints the Bibles, sends it free of cost to missionaries all around the world so that we in turn can take a Bible for free and give it to those who have received the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen? What an amazing ministry. Buy the truth, sell it not. So we're able to sell it not. We're able to freely give out full copies of the Word of God in Portuguese, in a whatever language of whatever missionary he, uh, country he's at, he's able to give it uh, through this ministry, through this beams ministry, to the people God has called them to in their own language. Why? Because someone has bought the truth. 
Someone has made the sacrifice. And one thing that the Beams ministry asks for us in return, they don't ask for any financial gift from the, ministry, from the missionary, from the church, from the person receiving the Bible. But they do ask that if it, it is all possible, that when we give the, as a missionary, when we give a Bible to a national that's never had the Bible before, and we hand them the Bible, and they have received Christ, we ask them if they would write a letter of what God has done in their life, of their testimony of salvation, so that we send it back to the local New Testament church, or we send it back to the person that has donated the funds for that Bible, so they can see how God is working in the lives of those have re- that have received the word of God. Amen? 2009, we received a box of Bibles. Uh, at that time, there was a lady in our church. Her name's Teresa. She's still faithful with us today. Amen? 2009, Amen. she got saved, and she's still one of the founding uh, faithful members of the local of the Bible Baptist Church down in Brazil. Amen? Just a... Uh, uh, just a sweet, dear lady of our church, and we praise the Lord for her. She received God. Amen. She received salvation in 2009. She received a free Bible from Beams. I said, I would like, for, I said, uh, can you write a letter about your salvation testimony? And she said, sure. So she gave me that. I translated it years ago, back in 2009, sent an envelope of the translated copy to, uh, I think it was a church in Texas that bought the Bible and sent it to that church. And uh, this just a few months ago, uh, back in Brazil, I was going through my desk and found the letter she wrote from 2009. And uh, so that evening, I wrote out, I translated it one more time, and I have it here in my hands. Amen? And so to, in order to finish out the service tonight to show us the importance of buying the truth is selling it not, but it's making a sacrifice so that lives can be changed. I want to read her salvation testimony because it's the word that changes lives, and we need to get this word out. Amen? That's what the conference is all about. Amen. And I pray that this letter will be encouragement to you. Her personal testimony of salvation will be an encouragement to you to, for us to see the needs that each and every one of us in the membership of Twin Ports Baptist Church has a responsibility of participating. And she says, I, Teresa de Castro, was born into the same religion that my parents are of, Catholicism. At the age of 28, I was influenced to start visiting a Mormon church. There I learned a little more about Christ and his love for us, but I definitely felt empty and knew that something was missing. I knew that their teachings were not completely correct. And was still missing something. Every time I went to church, I felt empty inside. I started looking for something else and visited a lot of religions and churches. I would find churches that I liked how the music made me feel, but got nothing out of the preaching. This is how my life was before I visited the Bible Baptist Church. I started attending the services at the Bible Baptist Church on Wednesdays and Sundays and realized that here I had finally found what I had been looking for. I have for so long been wanting to know more about the true gospel of Jesus Christ here on this earth. I had for so long heard uh, many preachers try to preach from God's word, but never had heard it preached so clear to me before hearing Pastor Sam preach God's word. He is not just a pastor, but truly a teacher of God's word. I have received the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Every time I go to God's house now, I learn more truths from God's word. I never want to miss a single service because I know I will miss out on learning biblical truths that God has for my life. I am so glad that I have found the Bible Baptist Church. I am thankful to the Lord for Pastor Sam's family. These servants of God were sent to my state of Hondonia, to my city of Jipana, to establish the Bible Baptist Church. 
I am so thankful for the transmission of the gospel of Christ that has come unto me in the lovely name of my Savior, Jesus Christ, your sister in Jesus, Teresa Castro da Silva. Buy the truth and sell it not. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you for the awesome responsibility we have, the opportunity we have. Lord, to invest, make an internal heavenly investment by simply buying the truth, by simply proclaiming the word of God, by simply printing it and making it known and preaching it as it was written and letting you do the transformation in life. Lord, we thank you for that. Thank you for using us. And Lord, I pray this evening, Father, that your will and way would be done reminding us the responsibility each and every one of us have because we have received freely the gospel. So we must now freely give it. Lord, move your will and your way. We pray this in the name of Christ. Amen.